Hi everyone, welcome to our bird basics video. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the characteristics that make birds distinct from other classes of vertebrates, discuss the importance of biogeography as it relates to birds, identify and describe the evolutionary ancestors of modern birds, explain adaptive radiation in the context of birds, and explain how the variations in bird forms are related to variations in function. So what makes a bird a bird? Birds are bipedal. They just have two legs and then two wings. So they stand on two feet. They have feathers uh, as part of their integument. So they're the only taxa with feathers and feathers are filamentous, soft and flexible. They're lightweight. They have bills for their mouth. Um, and the most, the characteristics that most differentiate birds from the other taxa are their ad adaptations for flight. So they don't have teeth. They have a gizzard instead, kind of like instead of teeth, where they swallow rocks into their gizzard to grind up food, and then they can regurgitate the rocks. Uh, they have spongy or strutted bones. A lot of times you'll hear them described as hollow bones of birds, but they're not completely hollow. They're, they have these kind of air pockets in them that makes them much lighter. Um, to help with flight. The birds have a keeled sternum. So it's um, the keel is like a, a flat bone that comes out from their sternum and it's an area for muscle attachment. So they have ginormous pectoral muscles to allow them to fly. The furcula or the wishbone is um, kind of springy to, to bounce the wings back as they're, the wings beat during flight. And then if you look at the hand bone, the bones are fused at the end of the wing and that allows them to maneuver their wings. Birds have amniotic eggs with calcified shells. So compared to a reptile shell, there's more calcium in the outer um, shell, which makes them a little harder. Birds are endothermic and homeothermic. So they derive their own body heat internally and they maintain a relatively constant body temperature. Birds have very high metabolism. They have a four chambered heart. So the most efficient heart that we've encountered in the taxa so far, and their lungs are surrounded by several air sacs, which really maximize the exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, and that's to support that high metabolism. Birds are present on all continents on earth. Biodiversity is highest in the tropical regions of South America. Many birds migrate over the course of the year. And a lot of times the migration patterns cover different continents. So this map here shows different migration patterns of different birds. And you, you can see that there are some birds that start out in the far northern reaches of North America, migrate all the way to the far southern reaches of South America, or that start out in Siberia and end up um, in Southern India or even in Southern Africa. So this is both a marvel of their biology, like how this is even possible. But when we think about managing and conserving birds, this brings up a whole different issue where not only do you have to conserve habitat in one area, you have to conserve in two areas and also there's stopping points along the way. So you have to take that into consideration when you're managing for and working to conserve bird species. Bird evolution starts with theropods, which um, are dinosaurs that shared many characteristics with birds. So, I mean, it starts far earlier than that, but we look back to these theropods to see um, kind of the, the evolution of our modern birds. So theropods were bipedal dinosaurs and on two feet, they had hollow or strutted air pocketed bones like our present day birds. 
they had a, a, a wishbone or a furcula, and they had a three-toed foot. The Archaeopteryx, whose fossils date back to about 150 million years ago, is thought to be an intermediate between reptiles and birds. This is a fossil of an Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is a genus. They were crow-sized, bipedal. They had small teeth. Uh, they had feathers on their wings and tail, so not on their whole body, but on parts of their body. They just took short flights. They did have enlarged visual and hearing centers in the brain. So they shared some characteristics with birds, also sharing some characteristics with reptiles. Adaptive radiation. That means the rapid diversification of a lineage. And we see examples of adaptive radiation across birds. So it's when different species adapt to different ecologies, different environments, and different behaviors. So you see it in an area where, so like Darwin's finches, where the, you look at the beaks and they're adapted to eating different, um, different foods. That's an, that's an example. So over time, based on the environment, there were certain traits that allowed individuals from a population to survive and reproduce better than those without the, that trait. And so that trait persisted. In birds, we can see that um, there was this adaptive radiation where it happens pretty rapidly so that birds can fill different niches in their environment. And you can see when you look at kind of the diversity of birds, how that is when you look at bills, when you look at um, different um, different parts of their body that they're adapted to fit the environment that they're in. So there's 30 orders of birds, more than 9,700 species. So close to 10,000 species on earth today. Over evolutionary time, there's been many more species than that. This kind of shows some of those um, examples of, of what I was just explaining with the different bills adapted for different environments and different behaviors. So look at that, a roseate spoonbill has this big elongated kind of spatula bill. Ducks have, um, you know, a flattened bill and they have lamellae that are almost like little teeth or ridges. Eagle's got this hooked beak, so you can imagine the different food sources that each of these bills are good for. Similarly, the feet of different birds are adapted for different environments. Web foot, probably gonna be in water, right? You see the different perching or grabbing kind of talons that some birds have. Leg length can give us a clue to environment. So long legs you might see in wading birds, um, certain, legs might indicate water or, or perching. And then plumage too, plumage can vary. Some birds have plumage to help them blend in. Some birds have plumage to help them stand out, even especially for breeding. And then this toe arrangement, there are different words for different toe arrangements and like zygodactyl, you see that in like in woodpeckers, birds that are on the I can't do it because I have five fingers and they don't go that way. But to, to kind of hop along the side of a tree, they've got two, two toes that go below and two above so that they're kind of balanced and can be right on the side of a tree. The silhouette of birds can sometimes um, give you a clue to their habits and their identification. So sometimes you might see a bird just flying across the sky you don't see its color, you don't see specific details, but that silhouette can sometimes give a clue. And we'll look at the silhouettes of the different bird orders. So go back and make sure that you have some information about each of these bullets. And if you need to go back in the video to um, check them out again, you can do that. I'm going to leave you with a joke. What do you call an owl with a deep voice? Any guesses? A growl. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you in class.